sponsored by Growth Point Properties and Lorium Capital. We have about 10 minutes to show time, folks. So if you can get yourselves settled, relaxed with a drink, I think you're going to be well entertained by some fantastic squash. We've been very lucky over this week to see some of the best young and up-and-coming talent that the world has to offer, including our own talent from South Africa, which is wonderful. We'll see you soon for some updates on the players. Get yourselves settled and ready for the action.
Good evening, folks. It's time for some South African SA Open 2023 presented by Growth Point Properties and Lorium Capital. It's fantastic to have the SA Open on. Why? Because it's a national championship title. There's nothing better for squash players to put this kind of thing on their CVs when they win it, that they are the South African Open champion. It makes an amazing difference. So if you're the British Open champion, the South African Open champion, it's a wonderful thing. These things can't happen without great sponsors, and we'll talk a bit about that later. They can't happen without great collaboration and partnerships, and we'll also talk a bit about that later. What you've actually come to see is some proper squash, and I think what you're about to see is some amazing squash. These guys are extreme athletes. Watch the way they move, watch the way they play, watch what they do with the ball. I think you're in for a treat. And I'm not going to keep you long now, and just I'm going to introduce you to these fine young athletes. The first player I'm going to introduce is one of the tallest on the circuit. He's an amazing guy, su superb nature. He's from England. He's ranked number 79 in the world. He's our number two seed. He's from Grimsby in England. Please welcome onto court Ben Smith. His opponent for tonight is a number one seed. This man is phenomenal. He's a strong lad and he moves like a springbok. <laughs> he is exceptional and I think they're gonna have an absolute fantastic tussle. He's ranked number 73 in the world. He's from Cairo in Egypt. He's our number one. He's playing against our number two, so the seeding guys got it right. Please welcome onto court Ibrahim Al Kabani from Egypt. And the referee for tonight's bout is Ian Harvey from Western Province. The Issa Open um, played between the Egyptian Al Kabani and the Englishman Ben Smith. 
our number one and two seed made it through to the final. We're looking forward to uh, hosting this event. My co-commentator, JP Brits, will be joining us shortly. And you, as you can see there, the crowd is filling up nicely. We've got a packed stand tonight, sold out crowd for this final of the men's open section. Um, as you can see there, we've got the world ranking of Ben Smith, highest world ranking of 74 at the young age of 21 years old. He's quite new on the, on the circuit, but has played 107 matches already with a 61.7% win. Both of these players have uh, gone unscathed uh, through to the to the final with Ikebani winning his second round 3-love, um, his quarterfinal 3-love and last night in his semi-final against the local hero um, Devil van Nikar, he won three games to one in a tight 64-minute battle. On the other side of the draw, Ben Smith um, had a tougher first round where he played the, the South African Tristan Wirth where he took that in five. Um, then he went up to a fellow or to an Egyptian, won the three love in the quarterfinal, and then to the famous Rowan Damming uh, from Netherlands. He won three love last night in the semi final. So, what a poised final we have for this SA Open. As they claim, it's a your SA Open, and you can see by the crowd coming through from for South Africa, this is our SA Open. How fantastic is this to have the top level of squash being played in South Africa once again. As the pl players are doing their final preparation, you can see Ian Harvey is the man in the center of the court there, um, getting ready for, for this encounter as the ref. Ian has had a good week refing a couple of these matches. See it's fantastic to see so many local players coming through, local supporters of the game coming through. to receive. Best of five games, now. gentlemen. You can see some excitement in the crowd Bravo. here. Very excited to have these tall players um, on court and the uh, high quality we're expecting over here. Akabani had a fantastic performance last night against the local superstar, Devil van Nikar, um, and he would like to keep his seeding as the third seed. Um, but he is playing against a strong Englishman in Ben Smith. Welcome, JP, to uh, your, your SA Open. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, an amazing week, and uh, I think uh, we're in for a treat for tonight's uh, finals. But yeah, thanks, John. It's going to be a great match to uh, share with you. Oh, I know it's quite early in, on in the match, but I have to uh, ask you early on, uh, any predictions for this? 
Yeah, someone else asked me this as well, and I think both players are really playing well. Uh, I must be honest, I was really impressed with Alcabani's um, movement and powerful hitting yesterday. You know, even though he's like a, a really attacking player, I felt like his ability to recover and uh, defend like real tight situations is, is exceptional. So uh, Ben has obviously played really well as well, and. Um, uh, I think he's, he's like yeah. matches has been really clinical. He hasn't really had a tough uh, encounter except for you know against Tristan. But um, I think it's going to be a really good match uh, to see. But my prediction is that Alcabani is going to do it in uh, four. Alcabani in four. Okay, uh, good prediction here. And uh, as your commentator, uh, fellow commentator, I have to go the opposite way and uh, yeah, fair go play. for go for Ben Smith. Um, but I'm going to go in five. Um, give the crowd something to uh, to cheer about over here. Yes, so far in the tournament we haven't really had uh, big upsets for the for the number one and two seeds. In both finals, we've got the number one and two seeds of both draws. Um, so you know maybe it's time that the number number two seed can uh, uh, pull one back and and be victorious in this tournament. A fast start, as we've expected. You know, um, again it's it's become much warmer. The ball is very bouncy, it's very quick off the front wall. And as expected, it's like really alive on the court. There it is. Massive call there from Ian Harvey um, to just get the crowd ready for this, uh, this final match. Uh, we've, we've seen that move before. You didn't get the ball. I think uh, Ian Harvey is making it clear that he wants the players to play the ball, <laughs> um, but I think uh, that was that was a little bit um, in the middle of the court, no, and uh, he's just going to take any nonsense today. No, it's a, it's a some tone set um, sent here by uh, Ian Harvey. Um, ben Smith um, will have to be careful not to cross that line. Um, yeah. But let, let's see how he regroups and uh, reacts to that call. And uh, another thing that was um, quite funny is Alcabani's shoelace going loose in the third point of the game. Yeah, He's going to have to make a double knot today <laughs> because he don't want to repeat another conduct stroke like last night. I think all the... The um, mental games coming out, uh, all the edges you need um, coming out tonight. This is a big final for both of these players, and both would be eager to uh, get this title to their name. Yeah, I know Ben said yesterday in his post-match in post interview that this is uh, his best performance on the PSA World Tour so far. Uh, biggest final of his career, so he'll definitely be pumped to, to get over this hurdle. And, and that says a lot for a number 70 in the world to, to say that um, really says a lot. And winning a final at this level is, is always incredible. Ben Smith taking the, the early lead, reacting quite well to that no lead decision, um, being quite unfazed with his approach in, in this match. We saw him a little bit earlier in his warm-up. He looked so relaxed and, and just ready for this encounter. Um, they have not played each other in a PSA match before, so um, new territory for both of them. Um, conditions not really suiting either of them, with it being at altitude and, and both of them training at sea level. So it, it's fantastic to see this nice bounce there for <laughs> Alcabani, but he's going to take that. Just a quick mention to Heartbeat TV for hosting um, the streaming of this, this event. I think we can all agree the, the quality has been exceptional. And it, it's fantastic to, to have live squash like this and have players from all over the world watching um, our ESA Open. 
Yeah, a little bit of an unforced error there by Ben. I think, uh, what do you think about the final of the 15k first game news? I think both of them look Amazing. quite at ease. I think it was, if it was me, it was a different story. Um, but I think um, they've both played at high levels. They both know how to perform in this situation. I think it's still a big event for both of them. I'm watching that, yes. Yeah. Very, oh. very polite way of uh, asking Ian Harvey to open his eyes. <laughs> I think he just wants to make sure the referee is uh, watching the movement of the player off the ball. Uh, otherwise, at one, you move twice as far, and two, you're probably not going to get to the ball. Oh, Ben has been playing that shot so... Whoa! <laughs> Clip that! Fantastic Jeez. finish there from Ben Smith. <laughs> Taking no nonsense from that loose there. Uh, definitely, drive. definitely shot of the tournament so far. Yeah, we haven't seen one uh, rolling like that so far. I think far. we saw one from Tristan where he hit the with the frame leg. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Tristan. <laughs> I yeah. think this game is going to become more and more interesting, you know, the, the um, flatter the ball becomes and if it softens up a little bit as the rallies extends, then we're going to see some really amazing skill from both players. Yeah, I think at the moment you can see, even when they're going short, it's, it's one step for both of these players. Um, although Ben Smith is a tall 6'4", Al Kabani is uh, not that much shorter um, and they're making the ball over the court look quite sh small. And Smith has, has really shown um, his composure in, in his early stages of this match. Oh, just shooting through to the back. A really, really quick shot to, um, to try and uh, defend off, but the court lets the ball just shoot through to the back of the court so quickly. Yeah, and I think Bain was just a bit slow with his racket. Kind of looked like he expected it to come off the back wall and then just died a little bit earlier. For both of these players, they've now kind of played in uh, three different um, weather conditions. The first few days were very cold and then it was very hot and now today with this crowd is, is very different. So I think um, for them to adapt quite nicely to this will take some skill and I think that's why we're seeing the rallies a little bit oh, longer. Right, sure. Yeah, that was a uh, good um, decision there by Alcabani was really being patient and then that first short drive that uh, Ben played he stepped in and quickly played a nice two ball burst winner on the left six all so six all it's not the court that we in South Africa see a lot of winners on but these international players have really come and uh, showed us how to hit some winners yeah, it's actually a quite a difficult court, court to play on. It's like almost you have to learn how to play on this court. But these players, you know, all world class and they've adapted quite quickly, you know, very well. Stroke That's going to be a stroke, yeah. <laughs> Been uh, clearly not happy with that call. Ach, I think he's a little bit more unhappy with himself, losing it to, leaving it to lose. And often uh, you take it out a bit on the referee's decision, <laughs> but that was not a good shot at all. And you know, Okaboni knows how to ask for late. He's not gonna, he's not gonna let that one get away. Oh, just clip, clipping it. I think he wanted to be a little bit and too um, like delicate on that one, just cutting it slightly too much. I think later on in the game that will work when the ball's a little bit softer. It's going to sit a little bit shorter, but for the moment, being uh, through the ball nicely um, <laughs> really works. I had a look a little bit earlier. We had oh, 
Beautiful yes. counter Very drop good there. counter drop there from Alcaboni. Taking a 9-7 lead, yeah. Alcaboni is 88 kilograms. And he moves like that, steps in, lunges, and he moves like a butterfly. Mm. Unbelievable movement from the big Egyptian. We've had uh, seven different nationalities in, in this tournament, which is uh, fantastic for, for all the South Africans to see. Obviously, a majority of them being Egyptian and South African. Yeah, good consistency shown good. by the referee. Similar to what uh, Ben went through a couple of rallies ago. Just a you know, bad shot from Alcabon in the middle of the court. And again, these guys' professionalism is not going to mm. let you get away with that. So I think fair call by the ref. It's a little bit uh, tight here in the, in the first set. A little bit nervy from, from both players. Not, not that fluid just yet. Just not hitting their targets at the moment. But I'm sure that will get better as, as this game comes to a close. Like I was saying, we, we have a lot of South African and a lot of Egyptian players. Um, but what's really phenomenal is we've got three English players and all three of them are in the final. Yeah. Oh. Oh, good recovery. South Africans oh. haven't seen a, a fetch like that before. Oh, this is going to be a big call from the referee. Yeah, Interesting call. No late given. Yeah. Like... Uh, uh, if we had replays, I think we would have seen Al um, change the... A little bit of a yeah, he definitely changed uh, sure. the path of, of his opponent's movement. And I uh, think it's going like to be... Like we said, uh, next year we'll get some video reviews in. Uh, <laughs> it will be ideal. I'm sure Ben would have loved to have a video review now. I think he would have used three already. <laughs> But I think uh, the referee is going to have his hand full in this match. I mean, both players are really big and tall players. Both love to um, dominate the T position and stay in front of their opponents. And um, I think, uh, you know, both of them will, will put in a sneaky back leg or, or movement back to the T. So hopefully it stays nice and clean and um, that both players can have a, you know, a fair, fair route to the ball. Two game balls here for Alcabani with the opportunity to take it. Stroke Alcabani. Stroke given. Alcabani takes the first set, 11 8. Nervy start so far, but uh, I think, uh, you know, like a final is tension is high, and both players will, uh, I think, uh, get used to the, used to the conditions uh, in the coming games. Fifteen seconds, gentlemen. Well, 
welcome, welcome back to second game of this men's final. Um, Alkabani uh, taking first uh, black. Just some technical difficulties, but um, I'll promote uh, JP Brits is uh, quite good technically, so uh, that's sorted out. Um, we would like to welcome uh, all the viewers from across the world. Um, please share with us where you're watching this from. Um, I know there's a lot of players from, or a lot of people from Egypt and a lot of people from England streaming in for this match. So uh, let us know in the comment section where you're watching this from. Players pounding the ball to the back corners, a little bit short, a little bit inaccurate, but uh, I think they really want to, you know, pick up the pace in this mm. game. The intensity has definitely gone up. I think that that first game was very nervy from both players. Alcabani happy to take that, but definitely very nervy. Oh, Great taking his space there. nicely there. Yeah, but again, I mean, not that I'd like if they take the space, but uh, Ben is leaving the Ooh. ball in the middle of the court. Yes, yes. I think the ref would have uh, liked them to play Hello. through that. Oh, great little touch there. Oh, that's lovely. Great shot there by Ben. Yeah, good call by the referee. Yeah, it's tough. I think, as soon as uh, the ball is past you, it's, it's tough to get a left. Yeah. I think Alcabani could have gotten there. But yeah. it, it's tough to make that call. Yeah, again, his cross court was not nearly wide enough, and uh, Ben was on it so quickly. Yeah, again, I think good idea, but just yeah. not just not tight enough, yeah. just not getting through to the to the back. We saw in that, that previous rally, Alcabani hitting that post. Oh, fantastic pickup! <laughs> So many calls happening at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a difficult call to make, I think. But I, but again, I think honestly, you probably would have hit him if he played that shot. Uh, but I understand Alcabani's point that the ball was on the other side. It just looks like Ben Smith is trying to get the easy points at the moment but, uh, yeah well yeah. both of these players are both looking of them, yeah. for those, those and actually like points. you know if you play that shot it could have quite been a i wouldn't say easy winner but yeah. you could have oh just stood on that <laughs> did not move off that yeah. ball at all but I, I must say the players are not giving the ref a chance you know <laughs> the, 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 the balls are getting being sh it's short it's in the middle of the courts they have to tidy up hit the ball deeper hit the ball tighter and keep the ref out you of the game Oh, good explanation by the referee. Out, two, I think he, it also did not look like he tried to get out the way. So I don't think Alcaboni allowed him, but <laughs> that's part of that's part of the game, <laughs> part of the tricks of the trade. Not good line hitting yet from Alcaboni. Both of these players uh, trying to control the tee. A little bit soft there from yes, this way. I need you to play those in the future as No, I, I like it. Yeah, I, I think uh, yes, I think uh, these these players are professional enough to play those shots. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was any danger in this instance. And I think that's what the referee wants. He doesn't want he doesn't want to call this game. You know, no, he wants the I players guess, to yeah. win and to to earn the rallies and not give uh, strokes on like 50-50 calls. I think what both oh, of these players are feeling it. at the moment is it's tough to hit winners. It's tough to just win the points and mm -hmm. they're relying on the ref to, to yeah. give them points. And yeah, it's, it's and, good and to the court see. being so bouncy yeah. and the ball like sitting up everywhere, I think it's just a little bit natural that a lot of interference will occur. That's great that's rough there, but yeah, there. that's the sort of defense I was talking about, you know. No lead. No yeah. Fantastic call there. That I was agree. that was waiting to happen. Yeah. That was waiting to happen. I think Ben Smith has to really change his mindset here 
Um, he's really just looking for the opponents at the moment. No interference there, could swing fully, could hit his own one now. <laughs> Decided to stop and, and create his own interference. I think that's a good call by Inyavi. But again, like, you know, it's been like three or four times where the referee are not giving the players easy strokes. Mm. I would like no. to think the players are going to start to play yes. these balls. You know? <laughs> At some point, they have in, to a, in a dominant position, he should have followed that ball to the yep. opposite side of the court and, you know, build pressure from there. And I think we can see with Alcabani's movement, he's, he's going around, he's playing through. He's learned his lesson with, with one or two no-lets to see that he has to go through and play the ball. The line hitting has definitely improved now. Yes, oh, the ball great retrieving. coming back. See, that was good, he played yes. that. Applies more pressure. Okay. And then the pressure builds and the pressure builds. And... Yes, yes. <laughs> the I'm sure Smith doesn't funny. think it's funny. Yes, it. You've done some as well. Yes, it. Four, three. I think that was the right call from from Ian. Yeah, I think it's bound to happen with big guys like this. Mm. But I think, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I think it's a very difficult task of, of a referee to, to handle this because uh, so much interference, two big guys, bouncy court, and both of them want to ask mm. for a lot. But I think the referee has really done a good job of it so far. Yes. At the end of the day, the referee's job is to get the fair outcome. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to get good quality squash. The players, fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. what we want. And look at the applause of the of the crowd. I really appreciate the good squash these two players are um, delivering. We want to see players hitting winners. We want to see them uh, clearing the ball and, and playing through things. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see the ref um, deciding this match. Well, they went through and played it. Well done, Ben. I also think, you know, if I was a referee and I see players always trying to play the ball and really trying their best to be fair and, and to play through, not through interference, but play shots that are like playable, then I'll probably be more lenient towards what, they, what they're asking for later on in the match. Yeah. But if you're continually asking, trying to get two points, mm. it, it gets quite can, annoying. You can see now, Ben Smith has won the last two points by playing through everything giving himself the chance to, to win the rally and he's won the last two rallies. I think physically Five, um, the both of these players are going to struggle if it, if it goes too long and we can see the, the towel breaks and the shoelace breaks coming in already. <laughs> Straight drives, uh, bouncing back, almost yeah, back to the, to the service box. <laughs> That's yeah. the conditions these, these guys are playing. And just for all our viewers, um, we are playing in Johannesburg. Johannesburg is about 1,500 meters above sea level, which means it's in a, a high altitude location. And therefore, we use a um, Dunlop high altitude white squash ball. So the ball has been adapted. Ooh, ripping bows there. Oh, lots of pressure. The ball has been adapted, but it's still very bouncy on court. That's going to be interesting. He was playing a shot. And out. Five four. Akabani, yeah, definitely coming across as the fan favorite here. Um, I think he's, he's just keeping to himself and five playing ball. The, the ball. Um, I think the more Ben Smith will do that, the more he'll get the crowd on his side and the more the momentum will also be on his side. It's a very good forehand drop that Ben Smith has. Like what Alcabon is just uh, retrieving, you know, he's like an elastic band. Yeah. 
He just gets to every ball, and like the further you stretch him, the, the quicker he moves. Yeah, and you, you can feel it for, for Smith. Like, he has to have two or three winners every rally to win the point. And I think that's why he's getting frustrated. Yeah. But I think he Gentlemen, just needs to stay. Gentlemen, don't use the front wall with your hands, please. Well, for that matter, not any of the walls. <laughs> but I think. Um, oops. Stroke to your Cabani. Harsh call mm. from what he's been giving so far. Yeah. I think that's that's more hunting the player than the ball at the moment. I think you've mis you've misread the you've misread the situation. He was going directly to that ball. And now it's six all from the right. Correct. I think if I was in uh, Smith's corner at the moment, I would just tell him to, to hit his legs, play his game, play through interference, forget about the ref, um, take, take his face in the, into his own hands at the moment because... Um, no need. Yeah, good call. Good call there by, um, by Ian Obi, I think. We're seeing a lot more calls than, than we used to, but it's, it's going to be the player that adapts the best that will come through this. late given there um, Ben Smith clearly unhappy I think uh, I think uh, <laughs> can we have court service please Ben Smith just uh, enlightening the crowd that this is in fact squash and not rugby. Um, I don't think England is really a rugby nation, but um, let's not go into that again. <laughs> I am sure the English fans watching this <laughs> won't appreciate that, Jonty. But yeah, I mean, with that movement, I yeah. think uh, Al Kaban is definitely you know, moving his back leg into the line of Ben with those uh, shots on the forehand. And um, at this moment, I don't think the referee is really aware of that movement. But Ben is going to have to, again, just keep the ball away from that, those he, positions, you know. He played through a lot in that rally already. And Alcabani did the same. And that's what we want to see. But that last movement, that was Ben trying to play through, but really not being able to get to the ball because of the movement of Alcabani and, and that should at least be a hit. Intensity picked up a little bit here. Yeah? Players hitting the ball and nice and firm. Again, loose shot. And out. Eight, seven. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's like not a great match so far, right, in terms of the flow of it. Like it's been so many stops and starts, every, every second or third point is interference. So it would really be nice if the players can tidy up a little bit and you know, give each other a fair chance of uh, playing a great game of squash. Darren Texas, stroke to Alcamani. Stroke to Game to Akabani. I think there's there's something in the in the rules that we'll have to have a look at at some point from a from a PSA perspective. I was having a look at a 2014 match, um, Rami Ashua Al Shabagi, very similar type of movements on and off to off the ball, and constantly given as a no let or a let sorry a yes let. We see a lot of strokes being given for instances like that where. I think it's encouraging a lot of players to go directly into the player and look for that. I think there's definitely something that we'll need to change in, in the way that we, we ref the, those calls, because otherwise this is how the matches are going to be. 
We see that a lot with Asal, how he moves on and off the ball because he gets mm. away with it. Yeah, as soon as we uh, reward the players with strokes, then they know they can keep on doing it. And I mean, it's going to be tough for the referee to now change his mind in calling it differently if he started with calling strokes to begin with. Mm. But the solution is always not to leave the ball short and in the middle. Because that's where, where the guys take their space and where they... Oh, pace is insane. This is better. Players navigating each other a little bit better here. It's the first somewhat use of height that we've seen. Yeah, I don't think there's been one lob so far. Uh, Ben Smith reading that very early, but just uh, caught off guard with the, the height of that bounce of the ball. Nice. Okay, Bonnie um, taking a one-point lead here, late in the second game. <laughs> just uh, rolling He's the ball to the front one. ball. Both uh, players disagreeing with this call. <laughs> you made this direct access, but the ball was tight. Yes, Ned. Enough talking, gentlemen. Do you think either of the players are going to ask for a new ball after this game? After the third game? Yeah, oh, definitely not. <laughs> I think uh, both would really like it if this ball can uh, slow down just a little bit and uh, they can hit some winners. No need. No lead given there by um, Jena Hobby. Giving that uh, two nervous. game balls uh, for Alkabani. Yeah, and to be honest, I think the line was to the right there. If I see any more of that, Mr. Smith, it'll be a combat stroke. given away there by Smith. Lots of frustration by the Englishman. And I think he definitely feels hard done by. I think uh, he almost looks like the bad guy at the moment. Yeah. And uh, he probably feels like he's not the bad guy at all. Yeah. So he's going to have to just reset himself and get ready for the third. I think what Alcabani has really done well is he's, he's kept his cool and he's, he's done what he needs to do. Uh, whether the calls go against him or for him, he's, he's played his game. Ben Smith and uh, Josh Taylor has, have a lot of work to do before this last game.
and we're back uh, for the third set in this Akabani final. Akabani leading two games to Lavia. Really frustrating stuff from, from Smith. Um, not really free flowing squash from both of these players. Um, hopefully, seeing some free flowing squash now coming through. Um, I think the ref has made it clear he wants the players to play through. Let's hope to, uh, to see more of that. Good movement there from Alcabani onto that ball. Really putting pressure on Smith with that volley. Just clipping it in there. It's going to show a lot of character here from Smith to uh, come back in this game. Oh, nice love there. A little bit. Oh, okay. little bit under finish. finish. Yeah, great finish. Ball definitely got a bit softer now, and I think both players are going to start to put the ball into the front court a bit more. Oh, great, great with the Bal Kabani. He's definitely going to want to push and finish us in uh, uh, finish us in three games. It's great to see such a settled crowd for the final final day of this Open. This uh, backhand corner is uh, a bit more dead now with this dead ball, so. Players are definitely going to start attacking those corners a little bit more. Be encouraged to play through and uh, hit some winners now. Then just leaving himself a little bit exposed with that narrow cross court, allowing Akabani to step up and volley on the T line. That's a better cross court. Goodness. No way. You have to move. Oh, he made all the effort to get that ball back, played through the interference and then created some interference for himself. Yeah, he got rewarded with a stroke against him. <laughs> from Alcabani onto that volley. Yeah, he got it. Massive pickup. Oh, goodness. Two goodness. massive pickups there from Alcabani. Just a shout out to one of our top uh, ranked SA Junior players, John Cornet Brandt, on uh, court service duty. Uh, it's good to see the youngsters, um, you know, seeing these matches live, getting exposed to world class squash, and uh, 
also Thank bringing you. his part in making the court play for the players. It's definitely not the first time he's mopped the court. And out for three. Cavani uh, using just uh, another opportunity to. Um, he just had like a minute and a half <laughs> to, you know, do that while court service is in place, and then but he I just. That's definitely the ref's job to uh, <laughs> control of that and make sure that we've got some free flowing swash. <laughs> Ambitious cross court drop from the back there by Ben. Wonder Good worth seeing uh, there. Just getting a little bit desperate, yeah. Trying to look for those winners. Stroke to Smith. Stel <laughs> Cavani, you can't clear that way. I don't want to see that you're clearing into his path. You've said your piece, thank you. No more. No more, do not open the door. Stroke to Smith, 4-3. Score is 5-3. Ben Smith um, feels like he's won the lottery there. Yeah, geez, you know, it's it's also the player's responsibility to make sure the, the match that they are playing and that they are showcasing to the people are you know, a spectacle to experience. I was unsighted on the pickup. Play it. 5-3. Oh, tensions are high. No nonsense cross for there, Val Cabani. But yeah, you can really feel the tension in the crowd as well, you know. I can feel like, it. I'm, I mean, they're almost a little bit, um, I don't say disappointed, but like disappointed with how it's all stop and start. Yeah. And I want to see more of that. I want to see good attacking squash and clinical uh, execution of, of the players. Uh, so the players have got a little bit of a responsibility to, to show the people some good clean squash and, and uh, the skills and, and the athleticism that they... Yes, lead. That they have. Again, no need, no need for Alcaboni not to play the ball. seeing now players moving a little bit into the corners yeah players lifting the ball a little bit higher onto the front wall oh he sort of read it well but you still have to still see how tight the ball is going to be when it, when it uh, when you reach the ball so I think a little bit of an unforced error there by Smith 6-5 mm. from the right I think Alcabani is leading for the first time in his third yeah. I think you can understand the, the frustration from Smith he he wants to play, he wants to hunt the ball, he wants to do his thing and that was the longest rally we've seen probably in uh, the last 20 minutes and uh, it, it wasn't that long. Mm. That ball just got tight and tighter the closer Seven Ben got five. to it and then as he hit it, it was like stuck. It looked like he just got a little excited there. It was there quickly and uh, that ball just being too tight and making an unforced error. Akabani being two points up here, it's a big game. Yes, let. 
I would have uh, definitely asked Al Kabani to keep his opinion, his opinion to himself if I was the referee. Yes, let's. 7-5 from the left. Oh, great finish. That's 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 what we want to see more of, you know. Like good strong lunging, got nice and low and he hit a beautiful straight low kill on the forehand side and that is what the crowd's here to see. from uh, Smith over there. And out. JP, our uh, predictions aren't looking uh, too great. Well, I'm there like 70%. No, nah, I think uh, you said 3-1. That's still <laughs> wrong. <laughs> um, I'm going to need some sort of miracle for, for Ben Smith to come back in, in this turn and, and take the next oh, two. Tight shot there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic finish there from Alcabani. See, that's nice, you know, squeeze the loose opportunity and, and then finish with a great uh, backhand straight drop. Good pick up there from Halkabani. A little bit of a Walsh drop flick it is. Straight, to ball straight back to himself oh. to give four match balls in this final. 10-6, match ball. Game set the match. And now Kabani takes that match. Three games to love. Three games to love. 11 8, 11 8, 11 6. Yo, that's intense stuff, man. Intense stuff. Eh? They call this the mini bull ring, folks. Not for a. There's a reason. There's a reason. When you're playing for a living, it's tense. And I know it's not easy always, but how are you feeling? How are you feeling about being the first SA Open champion in a while? The SA Open, South African Open champion. What does it feel like? Uh, I'm out of words, to be honest. <laughs> it feels amazing, actually. It's uh, my biggest title here in, uh, uh, in South Africa. The biggest title I've won in the PSA was the 10K. So yeah, 15K is my... Um, is my biggest title here, and I'm so happy to be to be here in the final and catch the um, the title here in the, in South Africa. Yeah, as a winner. Also, I'm um, I'm so happy with my performance regarding I, I won the tournament or not. I just um, I'm just proud of myself to be honest in this week because because I've been working hard. The, I've been working hard, sorry, in the last uh, couple of weeks. So I'm just happy the work hard I did finally paid off. Yeah. Awesome, Hiram. We'll catch up with you later. We'll catch up with your prize giving later as well. I just want to say to Ben Smith and as well, guys, the phenomenal squash, and I know it's tough, there's two big boys moving around the court and it's not easy to get round, and, but that's what makes the game and we just got to work with it and work with the Gruyffs to make sure that we have a great product. But you guys move like champions play like champions, and I think the next four years is going to be a huge, huge boost with the Olympics. So good luck for that. Thank you so much. Okay, cheers. Thank you. Thank you. I just, just, just want to thank uh, Joe here, the, my, <laughs> my best friend here in South Africa who's been taking care of me the last uh, couple of days. He's my number one driver here in the, uh, South Africa. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Joe, thank you. <laughs> Catch up later. Okay. Folks, um, before we take a little bit of a break, we can, have a, we can have a 10 minute break just to get some drinks and get yourself settled before the ladies final. But there's a few, just a couple of quick things I want to just say. We know that people that love squash, love squash. And 
we just thank you so much for supporting us tonight and coming out to see these great athletes in action. There's a few special names I'd just like to mention that are going to shape the pathway for the next few years for squash. We're hoping that our sponsors will too, but I'll get onto them later. But we have Mr. Barry Henricks, who's the president of SASCOC, who's very, very influential in Olympic circles here tonight. And for the first time, we can say he, can, he loves squash, I know that. But Barry, if you can just be upstanding to show your face. He now knows. We now can go to Barry and say, hey Barry, we're one of the Olympic sports and just give him a little wink. It's quite cool, good feeling. We've got Carl Potkitter, who's the, SA, the president of SA Squash. Carl, if you can just stand up for a second. And we've got Jennifer, Jennifer Soyo, who's the national manager of, of SA Squash. Without these folks, we're not gonna, We've got some big goals, I think, together. It's a collaboration. As we see, it's your SA Open. Um, and I think without them driving it, it's, it's, we, we won't have a team. So thank you to all these guys. And, we'll, and I think the next few years is in good hands. Get yourself a drink. We'll regroup in a few minutes' time. Try not to be too long because we want to get these girls on as soon as possible, as ladies on as soon as possible. Thank you.
both point properties and Lorium Capital. We will talk about sponsors a bit later, but suffice to say, without sponsors like that, these things don't happen. So we'll get on to Murray and Eston a bit later. I think. JP just sent me some interesting stats about these young ladies. They've played five times by the looks of things, and Jasmine Hutton has a 3-2 advantage over apartment, opponent Lucy. So it should be a bit of a tussle to see how that all pans out. Let me get back to my notes. Hold on. Tonight's finalists. Let me get there. From England, ranked 30 in the world, from Ipswich, England, she's had a great tournament. She was two love down in one of her matches. She clawed her way back because she's got lots and lots of heart. Please welcome onto court, Lucy Turmoil from England. Her opponent for tonight is our number one seed, who's looked pretty sharp all week as well. She's, she's in good form. I think it's going to be a great final. Please welcome from England, which is good to see, because we've got a few English people playing, which is wonderful, at the top end of the game. Please welcome Jasmine Hutton from England, our number one seed. And don't be afraid to cheer these wonderful ladies. Jasmine is 24 in the world, so I left that out. Go, Jazz! And your referee for tonight's spout is Alex Schwertzen, who's just fresh from a trip to Qatar for a platinum event. The world, the WSO, which is the world squash officiating, are doing outstanding work in trying to grow referee talent all over the world. So Alex, have a good match.
time. Seconds on court, please. Time. The SA Open 2023, proudly presented by Growth Point Properties and Lorium Capital. Women's final match. Lucy Turmel of England to serve. Jasmine Hutton of England to receive. Best of five games, level. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ladies final of the ISA Open Squash 2023. Uh, we're in Johannesburg, South Africa, and uh, my co-commentator, John Timatez. We've got uh, Lucy Turmel from England against number one seed, Jasmine Hutton. Down. And uh, we're very excited about this uh, match. And out. Chanti, welcome. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, are you excited about the match? Thank you, JP. Um, yes, um, I think the, the previous final was also a worthy final. Um, two worthy players um, with um, Upper Barney pulling that one through. But these two English ladies, two top 30 ladies in the world currently, um, fighting it out for the ultimate South African title. Yeah, we've just heard from the MC that these girls are 3-2 on 8 to 8 Straight to And uh, I know they are uh, fierce competitors on court since uh, they were juniors. And it's good to see them go through the ranks and being both in the top 30 already in the world. So I think the future is bright for both of these uh, ladies. And uh, it's great for us to have them in South Africa to, to show us uh, uh, world-class performances. Yeah, m massive compliment to, to you, JP, and your team for putting on this great show. We haven't had a ISA Open this big in, in a very long time. And I think speaking to all these players from Egypt and England, they're all very happy to be and very excited to come back next year. Yeah, no, for us it was just a privilege to be able to do it. You know, it, for us it was all about the players. Um, as you guys will see on the squash court, it says your ISA Open. And that means the players, you know, it's all about the players, it's about the spectators, it's about the squash community to know to really have a, a, an excitement back in in SA Open in a big PSA event um, for our squash community and for our players. So uh, we think the week went really well, and uh, let's see if we can get the cherry on top with a great performance by the two ladies. Three one. We've already seen some good movement onto all those balls and a lot more free flowing than the, the men's um, final. Um, but you can see these, these ladies are absolute professionals in, in how they go about um, prepping and playing this game. Yeah, it's, not, uh, it's not often that you see the ladies final uh, being played last on a, on a finals day. Usually it will be the, uh, the ladies going first and then the men going after that. But in this case, uh, you know, the ladies event being a 20k, we wanted to make sure that is the main event for the day. And uh, I think I'm very happy at the moment about that decision because the previous match was a bit of a stop and start and game. Two, and I think we're going to be in for a treat with a beautiful squash from these ladies tonight. So first game, a little bit up and down. Um, Thermal serving, trailing two, game, two, two points to three. And uh, again, maybe some uh, first game nerves. It's quite a big, big tournament for, for both of these girls. And um, both probably just trying to find a range in the opening rallies. And um, oh, great lift by Lucy. Down. Oh. Yeah, again, Three a little more. bit unforced. I feel like uh, you know she had most of the front wall to work with and didn't have to squeeze it that much. But. Uh, I'm sure the girls will get used to, you know, the movement, decision making, and then be more 
um, be more consistent with the execution as the as the rallies progress. JP, I'm gonna put you on the spot again here yeah, because you, you got the previous one incorrect. Um, who do you think is gonna take this and uh, do you have a score? Oh, just before I answer that, that was a great that shot by Lucy, fantastic. wow. And, and you can immediately um, hear the reaction from the crowd, you know, they, they really appreciate the skill and it's good to see um, the girls being quick on t onto the ball and, and know exactly what they are doing and uh, treating the crowd to some amazing skill. Um, getting back to your prediction, I, I'm very happy that I was right in my prediction and in the first was, match, uh, yeah. predicting Alcabani to take the win. But, uh, you know, I think these girls, they are, they are so evenly matched, you know, 3-2 and 8-8. Two, eight. They are a couple of uh, ranking positions from each other. And um, I think it's going to be a close one to call. Um, I don't want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the fence, yeah. Sitting um, on the fence, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Um, as the promoter, that's that's the default position that you should be in. Um, on the other side, I'm I'm allowed to be um, a little bit more decisive. And um, I think Jasmine has, has gone through this tournament without dropping a set, or she has gone with, without dropping a set. Um, but she's just been so clinical. Whereas Lucy had a little bit of a scare in that in that quarterfinal against the the, the strong French lady uh, when she had to come back from from two love down. I think the, the fight that she showed there showed me that she can take this. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it can sort of go, go both ways. Um, but uh, I think it's going to all depend on, you know, differently who, who handles the pressure the best. Like so far, I think neither of the girls have really settled. Well, that was a great shot and a nice little fist bump by Jasmine. And it seems like she's, um, you know, pumping herself a little bit up and try to get more excited, get the energy levels up. Um, and I think whoever is going to draw um, that in the first game, I think is going to have a massive advantage just to settle the nerves a little bit and to uh, feel a bit more comfortable and confident to go into the rest of the match. Oh. That was in and the red basket score. and she spoiled it a little bit. I, I'm sure she'll be kicking herself there because she set it up quite nicely with a nice tool boast. And then she was ready for it, rack it up. And then but it was, it it was great movement there from Termal to, to get onto that ball and attack it back. Both of these ladies are incredibly strong. I don't know if the, the camera angle does justice, but they're both incredibly strong and hitting the ball really well into these back corners. Oh, but the death touch on that is incredible. About seven, six. The crowd giving the approval of that kind of squash. And uh, I'm glad that they are treated to some free-flowing squash. We haven't had much uh, interference yet. That was... Um, controversial it was quite clean cut strokes so far and um, that's more of what we want to see out of this final I think it speaks volumes to the the skill these ladies have to finish the ball um, into into both the front and the back end corners um, letting the ref uh, sit there and uh, watch the show oh. stroke to happen. Yeah, she just read that very quickly and was so quick on to the ball left. and um, Lucy floating it a little bit loose there and I think Fekul, I think uh, she should have lifted a little bit higher or cross court just, just to give herself, a bit more more um, herself some time to get out of the way. Let's keep play a bit more continuous, hitting every time between rallies and getting the ball. Beautiful. And that's great showing nice. of uh, strength and skill, you know, because it's not easy to move in that quickly and still control it r really nice and straight without clipping the side wall. So a great shot there by Jasmine. Down. Oof, a little bit. Ten, she hasn't made that many unforced errors yet, but that gives um, Jasmine four game balls to draw first blood. Well, that's the uh, that's the boast that's been working uh, throughout this tournament for for Lucy, and I'm sure she'll try and find the range a little bit better. Um, Hutton is a very good move, mover onto that ball, so she'll have to just be a little bit more patient when going short, um, and know that Hutton will probably get the ball back and then keep on attacking. 
better idea from DC. Oh, it great, has nice. Straight line. Oh. Yeah, Jasmine get onto the, getting onto that volley nice and early. Both players being nice and patient in this rally. Both have had opportunities in the middle of the court, but chose to still keep attacking the back corners. Oh, beautiful lift there by Lucy. And uh, it's good to see them being nice and patient. Oh, and then the pressure just built up a little bit too much. And uh, Jasmine uh, takes the lead. Oh, one love, one game to love. Zoom in 60 seconds. Play will resume in 30 seconds. seconds. Like, like it right now. Time. Hudson leads one game to love. Level. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the second game of the ladies final. Jasmine uh, taking the first game and uh, that will definitely give her lots of confidence going into the rest of this match but uh, both of these ladies are world-class squash players and uh, I'm sure both of them know it's still a long way to go and still everything to play for. Great straight drop by Lucy forcing some pressure but uh, Jasmine's in there beautifully um, defending that drop with a nice cross court lob. Oh, beautiful finish by Lucy, Brilliant well done. Squash there by both players. And out, one love. That straight drive from Jasmine in, in that front left-hand corner is deadly. Really good example of um, good technique and still rushing in to play that ball and, and just straightening up very well. Oh. Oh. And out. Yeah, again, one the boast that she likes, but uh, she's putting two out of two into the tin so far so I think it's the pressure that um, Hudson has built up showing that that she can retrieve those balls and um, making Lucy just hit it a little slightly low and low and low until she flips the tin oh some powerful hitting there by Jasmine to yeah and Lucy just hitting it a bit too loose and um, two one giving a ref quite an easy call to award Jasmine as a stroke. Oh, good use of fight there by Jasmine. Oh, just too tight. Yeah, good and recovery from uh, Lucy. Like, not forcing it, just uh, lifting it down the wall and uh, just too tight for Jasmine to get that one off the, off the side wall. Great drive again. Great, great movement by Jasmine. Just yeah. getting herself out of trouble so well in that front corner. 
no let. Yeah, I thought she took the wrong line there. That was great good play by Lucy. Yeah. You know, she was putting Jasmine under some pressure, forcing a nice opportunity to get onto the backhand volley and a well executed straight volley drop. And that's what you want to see. If you're moving into the wrong line, you have to show that you are getting to the ball um, in order to either get a let or anything for that matter. But I think that was definitely the right call by, by um, Alex, the, the ref. Oh, oh, great good movement. Fetch. Oh, and again, oh, that straight wow. drive. Hutton's showing everything and playing the straight drive. Fantastic shot. It's a very dangerous corner there for, for Lucy to take it into that left front hand corner. Oof. A little bit unforced again. So second, second unforced error for Lucy in the second game. And uh, she's going to have to cut that out. You can't afford to give any easy points for your opponent on this level of the game. Great camera angle there to see the back end drives coming oh. through. The ball just sticking to the Yeah, back. we've seen that a couple of times this week. You know, for our viewers back home, the court is really difficult to read. And uh, once you get the ball into the back corners and it, it, it like it's stuck to the sidewall, it's really difficult to judge exactly how far the ball is from the sidewall. So um, if a world-class player like uh, Jasmine misses a ball like that, you must know it's it's not because uh, it's a <laughs> it's the playing conditions that's very tough. Oh, beautiful two of those. That's a big difference we've seen where Hutton, Hutton moves onto that um, trickle bow or that post quite well and Lucy just um, not getting to that one that Hutton played. Oh, she's been uh, going for that shot, I think, three in a row or maybe more. And even in the, in the previous rounds during this tournament, I saw that she's, she loves to go for the straight volley drop of the serve and that one was beautifully executed. That's the first Six, one five. that uh, Jasmine has forced yeah. in a while. Yes, sure oh, nice shot. Six five. So Lucy taking the lead in this uh, second game. Bit of breaking play there, but uh, that would have allowed both players to settle in a little bit, get the um, headspace right, and make sure they've uh, they've regained focus to take on the second half of the second game. Good straight hitting from both girls, jumping onto those volleys. Oh, great straight finish! Uh, great, great straight drive. Not finding a range exact, exactly there, Lucy. Uh, she had a good opening there, but uh, just seeing it a bit short. Oh, oh, great goes. movement there by Lucy. Good. No, no. Yeah, great straight volley drop there by Jasmine. And the crowd really appreciative of that uh, good rally nice. and uh, great movement by both players so far this in this game. This is ferocious. We've, we've not seen this on the main side of the draw yet. This is really incredible hitting, hunting every single volley. Oh, great to see her play that shot. A lot of players would have wanted to ask uh, for let on that one, but uh, Jasmine went through and played that ball. Oh, and here we go, some diagonals. Oh, there yeah, and the pressure just a little bit too much. Great play and good comeback there yeah, by Lucy. Seven, six. Just making her opponent do a couple of diagonals from the front left to the right back. And uh, that would get the heart rate up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, fantastic yeah. finish. I think Jasmine uh, just a little bit over eager with Eight, that cross court flick. And, um, 
Lucy read it like a book and quickly step in, play the straight, simple straight volley drop for a winner. The, the body language of the two players has just shifted slightly. Hudson becoming a little bit more desperate, not willing Whoa. to do all the work, and Good that boast shot. is now working. It's the first nice. time the boast is working. Big turnaround here for, for Lucy. And six. Too much pressure yeah. for that kind of shot. I think at this stage of the game, you know, I think she should have just lifted it up, you know, recover back to the, the team. Posi uh, the positive play that Lucy is showing, taking the ball in short from the back, um, hitting those links so well that that puts a lot of pressure onto Hutton. Good retrieving there by Hutton. Is that Bose coming in? Yeah, Lucy on it quickly, that. but yeah, she just would have liked to get that one a little bit wider and down the back end wall. Seven ten game ball. And I think, uh, yeah, Lucy's still with three game balls, but uh, she's going to have to be careful not to relax now and think that she's got the second game. As uh, sometimes when you're playing well and you've got game ball, you can sort of relax and then. And then your opponent plays one or two yep. shots like that, forces the stroke. 8 10, game ball. Yeah, you caught it, so. 8 10, game ball. <laughs> <laughs> the referee, referee just explaining to Lucy that if she catches the ball, there's no need <laughs> for him to award the stroke. It would just be a, a shot that's not good. But uh, anyway, so Jasmine have saved two game balls. And uh, I think Lucy's going to definitely want to convert this one before the pressure builds a little bit on, uh, on the scoreboard. Oh, yeah. ripping bows. Beautiful play there for Martin. Yeah, and just now like a that. lot of pressure on Lucy. Yeah, and Lucy will definitely feel the pressure now because she knows if she doesn't convert this one, it's back to 10 all, and uh, then it can be anyone's game. Great play by both yeah. players. Uh, ja Jasmine is all, is all on the attack at the moment, and Lucy is doing really well to keep herself in this rally. And uh, oh, trouble! Yeah, oh, it's going to be no good. Drop. Yeah, that was great play by Jasmine. The last couple of points, saving four game team balls ball. and putting it Lame back to ten all. And uh, it's that's how quickly the momentum changes in squash. Big one, left side. Yeah, saving four four game balls there, and uh, you have to say the momentum is on her side. If she goes up to love yeah, it's really tough to come back. Oh, that was a great play. I mean, lunge a first like forehand volley smash on the wall, and then beautifully lunged with a straight volley drop on the back end side. So that was textbook stuff. Let's see if she can convert the fifth game ball. I'm sure it will make her feel a lot more at ease if she can, you know, get some reward for all the good play in the second game. Yeah, good shot. Now it's Jasmine's turn. Yeah, just, just popping out. The movement wasn't that great. The ball was just too yeah, loose. I think uh, she got quite excited when she got that opportunity and maybe just a little bit over eager. Uh, meeting the ball into the side wall and um, the referee awarding Jasmine with a stroke. So back to 11 all. And uh, I think this is where Jasmine's going to want to turn the tide on, on Lucy and, and earn herself a game ball to put the pressure back on on her fellow countrymen. Oh, yeah, that's one too many for me. Game ball. You know, and I feel a little like bit too far back in the court to, to yeah, attempt Yeah, and too like early that. in the rally, you know, like at 11 all. Push yeah. that ball down the wall, get, it, get yourself onto the tee. We've and, uh, seen these ladies, they attack quite
quite a lot from the front, uh, from the from the volley um, of the serve, and, and it works. It, it really does work. So I think the idea was just not executed as well as she wanted to. Yes, let's 12 11 game ball. Really solid riffing here by by Alex. Big point here if um, Hutton can uh, convert this game ball, that will you know make a big difference in the sort of mindset of both players yes let's oh that, yeah, that was a close call that was a good as a mathematician um, there's a big difference between one all and two love <laughs> don't think it takes a good mathematician <laughs> to know that but thanks Jonty Chasmus on the attack yeah a little bit overeating that cross court drive and players settled down a little bit back to um, an even contested rally. Oh wow, that was that was a great shot, like one of the best shots of the tournament so far. And what a time to pull it off in the game ball of the second game. And that was phenomenal, walking off nonchalant, bring it on again. Fantastic squash there from both these ladies. Yeah, and I mean, that's a big turnaround, you know, from uh, saving five game balls in the second game and leading to love. I think uh, this is a big mountain that Lucy has to climb if she wants to um, win this match. So Lucy, um, uh, Jasmine leading to love. A uh, big couple of games coming up. seconds. They will resume in 30 seconds. seconds. Time. Hudson leads two games to love. Love all. We're at the start of the third game. Jasmine Hutton leading two games to love. Uh, Lucy actually played a really great game in the second game. They just lot of, lost a bit of focus when she had the uh, game ball up and that's where everything turned around. So I'm sure she'll be, uh, you know, pumping herself up to get back to that place she played in the in the middle part of that second game. But uh, credit to, to Item, she really um, did not stop attacking. And that, that last shot that she played, I, mean, oh, I almost fell off my seat. <laughs> that was an amazing was, wow. shot, yeah. can actually see the ball got a little bit, uh, oopsie, a bit of an unfortunate error there by Jasmine, but you can definitely see the ball got a bit softer now. And uh, we'll definitely see the players taking the ball in short uh, a lot more often, um, I think, going on from here. If you guys, uh, all of you, back home, if you if you're thinking that the players are leaving a lot of balls um, out to volley and letting it go to the back, this court is so fast and it's not as as easy as it looks uh, on screen. Like uh, 
sometimes it feels like there's a couple of volley opportunities that they didn't go but uh, this this ball comes so quickly over the off the front wall that you sort of put yourself under a bit of um, risk when uh, you know taking a ball that's come to you so quickly so i think both girls is really um, making sure that they are choosing which ones to go for and, and not like taking too many risks in uh, playing a shot that's not um, in the zone Oh, yeah. That's also the shot that I felt is Three, very two. difficult on the court. You know, a, a cross court lob because, mm. because it like almost like a trampoline effect off the front wall. If you just overheat that shot slightly, it easily goes out. And uh, I think that that's also maybe one of the reasons why we don't see that many lobs mm. um, during this but tournament. Lucy's been one of the few players in this tournament that has used the lob effectively on the court. Wow. And out Again, I think good shot to go for, but I think uh, intent was just maybe a bit too much to um, win the point on that shot. I think if that was up above the turn, it would have created a lot of pressure um, for Lucy and then maybe create uh, another opportunity with the next shot for Jasmine to, to win the point. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure how much, whoopsie, yeah, that will be a stroke. Big button. Yeah, but the ball was quite loosened by four, three. <laughs> Good explanation given there by um, the ref. Yeah, again, if you if your shot is in the middle of the court, you you don't really have a foot to stand on, because um, it, it it just makes the decision makes uh, look so much more obvious. So you have to tidy up and get the ball a little bit tighter down the wall to to support your case if you want to defend a, a call from the referee. Oh, no, it. yeah. Consistent, consistent refereeing here by Alex at the moment, and uh, I think the players knows exactly what they need to do. Uh, so, but yeah, Jasmine putting it back at four. All, so, second half of this game is going to be like really important for Lucy. She wants to stay in this. Fantastic body yeah, drop. Yeah. The skill yeah. these ladies are showing on a court this quick to leave the ball that short is immense. And it's good to see Lucy stepping up, you know, and, and staying confident and positive in her approach to this game. And um, if she can keep that up, oh, uh -huh. and that's how, uh, you know, world class player yeah. replies after a shot like that. Great backhand volley drop. Um, by Jasmine to take it back to 5-0. I've been very impressed with both of these ladies' uh, mindsets. Even when there's calls going against them or there's movement that's not great or the other players hitting winners, they just respond so well in the next point. They just reset well and then <laughs> get winners like that. What a most. Yes. That was incredible. Seems like they're picking up the pace a bit here, both girls really hitting the ball a little bit harder. Yes, yes. Oh, referees, the referee chose to stay neutral, neutral there. I felt uh, the, that drop was yeah, a little bit over it, but... Uh, that one she could have got to, but it was a bit of interference. Well, that's the explanation. I think sometimes it's just traffic on court. Um, I don't think either there player can be unhappy. There was where Jasmine could have turned in and... Um, Asked for the let, for the let and, and probably got in a stroke, but she chose to play through that. And I, I, we like to see that. We like to see players moving through. And I think Jasmine doesn't mind the rallies going extra long. She really backs her physicality. And <laughs> yes. Oh, great shot there by Jasmine. Attacking. That ball definitely stayed in, and that was a great recovery shot from Lucy. Oh, that was a great cross court by Jasmine, giving an opportunity for a volley. Oh, oh, beautiful! Like a feeding session on there. Oh, wow. And the crowd like got excited after that one. Five. Jeez, like. Wish we could see that again. That was brilliant. 
And that was nice to see, you know, she, she didn't like get overexcited after getting those yeah. opportunities and she just um, got in position and bam, straight nick. I think that's the shot of the tournament. I would agree. Yeah, I mean, followed up by she's that. on form at the moment, you know, she's really enjoying herself. Eight, five. You know, she's confident, she's got a, you know, she's got a spring in her step and uh, I'm sure she's going to want to push on on the scoreboard from here. Jasmine has had a good time in South Africa in the past. Yeah, actually, she's won uh, two tournaments in a row in 2019. Uh, the Joburg Open. Ball's good. Ball's good. Nine, five. Absolutely saw the ball good. 9-5. Might just be the panel, but it was clearly good, visibly. 9-5. Yes. You can definitely see some daylight between the tunnel <laughs> and ball there. It was a different sound. It was a different sound, but these panels are like 40 years old, <laughs> and uh, there might be a dead spot Nine here five. or there. But, um, yeah, so Jasmine won two PSA tournaments out of two in South Africa before this event and if she converts this game that will give a 100% record of PSA tournaments in South Africa you know in, in out oh out well she's four got five, five match balls to do that ball. and four years ago she was just starting a PSA career and now she's already have been world ranked number 20 in the world so it's great to see them come back to South Africa again mm. and uh, she has earned herself five match balls in a 20k on the PSA Challenger Tour what a brilliant performance by both of these ladies. Jasmine has been ferocious in the way she attacked. But Lucy, in that second set, she looked like she could take it. But what a finish by much. Jasmine. And she does it again. Three for three. A great squash by both ladies. And you can see how much it means to Jasmine. And just an amazing performance by both girls. And really um, showcasing their skill and athleticism for the crowd. And what a wonderful match to um, close off this tournament and a great week of squash in Johannesburg, South Africa. That's it from us. Enjoy the presentation and uh, see you guys later. Good performance, Jasmine. Jeepers, that's tough squash. What's it feel like? Is this your first national title where you've actually won the, like the, the something open? Uh. Apart from the Irish Open, yeah, yeah. This it's one. your second one then? Yeah, yeah, this is one of my biggest ones, yeah. How does it feel? Yeah, amazing. Um, you know, me and Lucy go way back. She was like, she was actually my first finalist when I was 11 years old. <laughs> so we go really far back. Um, but yeah, she's a great friend and I'm really happy to win today. Superb, man. We will... It's amazing. We'll catch up with both of you. We'll catch up with both of you at prize giving and you can say a bit more there. Well played, it's superb performance. Great week, great week. And to you too, Lucy. Well done, Lucy. <laughs> Folks, please don't go away. These guys and girls need your support for the prize giving. While we're waiting for them to set up, I just want to tell you a story, a true story. I often don't tell true stories. This is a true story. Because this basically sums it all up, really, and what the sport is about. And uh, the most important thing is how we connect sport to people's lives and change people's lives. That is ultimately what it's all about, and give more people an opportunity to play this awesome game. And I don't think few have done it around the world as well as the Goli Youth Empowerment Program. Many of you know it. Many of you have been involved with it, but people have given up their time to make this happen. But I don't think they're even looking for that too much acknowledgement as individuals because it is a collective. But I just wanted to read a story to you today that was on Facebook. We are super excited to feature the amazing journey of our head coach, Request Senior Diwa. Request recently competed his LLB degree at the University of South Africa this year and will embark on a journey of being a qualified advocate in South Africa. Our graduates' lives transforming from being, our graduates' lives transforming from being junior mass participation program beneficiaries into leaders, now facilitating the same positive changes in others that they learned through being a part of the 
Egoli Youth Empowerment Program is truly inspiring and deserves to be acknowledged. Request joined the Egoli Youth Empowerment Program when he was 12, 12 years old through our inner city mass participation program. He grew through the program and through his passion for changing lives. Request is now a, a qualified head coach for the Egoli Youth Empowerment Program and coordinates and organizes and conducts squash youth empowerment session for our players. Can he, that is Request in the new, and he's here tonight, guys. Request. So it works. It works when you've got tireless individuals like Len Lazarus, like Les, who basically give their time, like Sharon, who put their time and energy into it. So thank you very much for what you guys do for these, for these people's lives. The, so what's the connection to the SA Open squash? Well, both Lorium Capital and Growth Point put a substantial amount of money in to make this tournament happen. And part of that substantial amount of money goes to the Goli Youth Empowerment Program to show their support and to make sure that, th that the, the sport is spread to the right parts and the money goes to the right parts as well, which is crucial and it's essential because it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing to see people in the inner city hitting balls against any kind of wall, having fun, because when they get to this court, it's like the talent comes out and there's been some superstars already. While we're waiting, I'm going to talk a little bit about the two young men bringing all the flowers on, not talk a lot about them, but basically they have stepped up to be promoter and tournament director. They will walk you through a few thank yous once they're set up, and we will try to get the show on the road as quick as possible. But Paul Atkinson and JP Brits, both past squash players, have taken the bait that the PSA threw at them to say, let's try and bring squash back to South Africa with squash South Africa and, and with squash South Africa together. And I think this past week we've learned a lot, the guys have learned a lot, but we're here. And I think that's important. And what happens next, we might go to hopefully go to bigger and greater things. And I'll give you a little bit of a, I may be repeating myself for people who've been here in the week, but I'll give you a bit of a heads up on the Olympics, on the squash's route to the Olympics. Everyone's been wondering like how, why, what over many years. I'm sure Barry's had to answer many questions about why we're not in, when we should have been in potentially in our own minds. And there's a lot more to it. So it's, you can't go into all of that. What we can say is in LA 2028, we are now an official Olympic sport for those games. And <laughs> And I think if you had to ask the people who made it happen, they will say one thing, squash takes the credit, not the people that play squash take the credit, the people that love this game. And every place that I've visited recently where there's a driver at a club behind the growth of this game is still flourishing. So a lot of people have said, oh, the game is sort of dwindling and it's not, but actually those clubs that where there's a driver or a human being or a couple of human beings that are making things happen, it's amazing how people love this game. So they play, and they actually, there's no better place at the moment than the States for that. The US, it's a college sport, fully fledged Ivy League sport, so young people from around the world can go and get an education if they're that good, on full bursaries if they're even that good. So Ali Farag, who's number one or two in the world at the moment, he is a Harvard graduate, and he's on the world circuit. He saw the path, and he, obviously he was good enough to get there as well, but that's what he did. But a lot of people don't know that path exists, and it does. And that's why I think the, the US, with the investment of an individual called Mark Walters, who owns LA Dodgers, as well as a stake in Fel Chelsea Football Club, who's invested in the sport, obviously kickstarted a lot of excitement around it. And there's, there's a lot of potential, including um, tournaments that can be now sorted around the world without waiting for other sponsors. We can work with sponsors to make them happen. But basically, the long and short of it is US Squash, the World Squash Federation, and the Professional Squash Association worked very, very closely together in a collaboration to take it to the next level when they actually met the right people at tournaments and stuff. So it was a collaboration, and that's how they got in to LA 2028. It's, there's no dead certs, we can stay there. We have to prove ourselves. 
but that's the long and short of it. So thank you for everybody in the world of squash that has supported this for years and years, but let's make it stick. Okay. I'll now, I'll now hand over to Paul Atkinson, who is basically with JP has put the show together. Thanks, Thanks Craig. Thanks, everybody. Um, I think, like uh, Craig says, there's so many things that go into putting in a tournament like this, and it's really fantastic that the PSA themselves, so the Professional Squash Association, has decided to back squash in all parts of the world again, um, particularly countries like Australia, South Africa, uh, New Zealand, England, um, places where squash was typically very, very strong. And we were very fortunate tonight to have quite a few of those players um, in the gallery, either this evening or during the past week. Um, one of those people happened to be our one of our sponsors, so to Murray Winkler, one of the past, um, I can't say Springboks, but one of the past uh, team members of the South Africa, one of the South African team members, to Dave Barrow, uh, Craig Wapnick himself, to Dival van Nikak, who's the new youngster coming through, and to a current player, I know he's nearly finished, but to JP. <laughs> it's been great to have you guys in the crowd. We also had uh, Johnny Lieb here earlier, we had Paul Simmons, we had the great Jeff Hunt that came to watch squash. Um, he actually won the SA Open eight times. Uh, not many people know that about him, but he actually obviously um, played a lot of his squash in South Africa. From our side, I would just really like to say thank you to a, a couple of people. Firstly, to the refs. There was a team of five refs for the whole week. To all of you guys, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> to the hotel, the tournament hotel was Southern Sun Rosebank. To SO Golfing, who helped us with the transport of the players. To the Wanderers Club, obviously for this incredible facility and the only all-glass court in South Africa currently. I believe that there's a rumor that there's another one coming. Um, to our medic, who's been here the entire week and is eager. <laughs> to our um, incredible, I think guys, you'll you you agree with me if you've been watching any of the streaming on YouTube or on Facebook, to Heartbeat TV, you guys have done an exceptional job, so thank you very much. And then to our sound, um, to Servcore, thank you guys also, really appreciate it. And then last but obviously not least, to the two main sponsors. Um, these guys have been sponsoring or supporting Squash in various ways, whether it be through playing, whether it be through leagues, whether it be through tournaments, whether it be through actually um, empowering the youth. So I really would just like to say a huge and massive thank you to Murray Winkler of Lorium Capital and to Estienne de Klerk from Gross Point Properties. Thank you guys. <laughs> And then lastly, as Craig has said, you know, this is a fantastic collaboration between the PSA, Squash South Africa, and hopefully ourselves. We have some really exciting ideas for the future and, and other events that we would like to put on. And I really believe that Squash is in a very exciting place. And together with Mr. Hendrick sitting in the front row, I'm sure that we, uh, we're gonna make it to the Olympics and we're gonna make South Africa proud. So thank you to all of you for supporting South African Squash. Thank you for paying for, to watch world-class Squash. I think that's uh, a big thing. And then if I can just call Murray and Esten onto the court, please, to do the prize giving. Um, another little interesting stat, folks, is that the prize money for the woman was 20,000 US dollars and the men was 15. And people like Murray say, you know, oh, what, why is that? And Murray has learned a lot over the years that women's football around the world is now equitable, squash is equitable, but why the extra five? Well, there's a very good reason for that because to attract a certain level of player, we need a certain level of prize money, otherwise their ranking points go down. And I think that is why there was the extra five which was put up by the PSA Foundation to make sure that some of our, 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 um, our top player could play and some of the other top players could make that category. That's the, that's the main reason, but it's very equitable and we're very proud of that. Um, right, let's get on to the business end. I think when I've watched Squash this week, it's made me want to play again, and I think that's the main thing, really. I don't know about you, Murray, but I really want to play. I don't, I don't think I'll make it, but it doesn't matter. You know, you got, it's so great to see these guys play like the way they've played, and it's not easy and it's tough, and the referees have tough decisions to make, but, you know, 
I just can't say enough about them. And I think the first guy that I have to call on is a runner up, but he's a winner and he's gonna win tournaments and he's gonna get himself even better and stronger because he knows what he's playing for. Please welcome the runner up of the South African Open 2023, presented by Laurium Capital and Growth Point Properties, Ben Smith from England. Tough, to, it's not always easy to talk after you've had a bit of a loss, but tell us about your week and, and your plans and, and life in general. Uh, yeah, happy with my week. It's obviously uh, my biggest final to date, so happy with how I played. A uh, bit unfortunate in the final, but that's the way the game goes sometimes. And yeah, I've enjoyed my week here in South Africa. Awesome and great to see you. And I'm sure, what's next for you now? Uh, I fly straight to Malaysia tomorrow for another tournament, so carry on going. <laughs> Good luck and we, look, we wish you well. And I think a lot of the South Africans now are going to watch out for you and just see results and they're going to put a face to it. So thanks for coming to our shores to play. Appreciate it. Thank you. Honestly, this next guy, I've never seen a chap his size move as well as he does. I thought, I thought he was going to tie out. He's fantastic. He's amazing. And really he's quick. His hand speed is incredible. He's our South African Open men's champion. He's Ibrahim Al-Kabini from Egypt. Where is he? Bring him on. I've just been told a stat that you're the second winner of the SA Open. Yusuf Ibrahim was the first. What's it feel like and how does it feel to be a national champion of a country? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, writing my name here in, uh, in South Africa after Yusuf Ibrahim, it's, uh, it's such amazing. Because, you know, Yusuf now is, is doing a really good job on the PSA World Tour. So, yeah, writing my name after him here in South Africa and winning my biggest title here in, P uh, in, in the PSA. Is absolutely uh, awesome for me, and uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. And wait, what's next for you now? What 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 can we watch? Oh yeah, I'm playing the same tournament Ben's, Ben is doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going Malaysia, yeah, uh, in like two days. You know, like squash squash um, is is really tough. Like uh, it just like people say it's week in week out for me nowadays. Like it's it's day in day out. Uh, my match, my next match is like in three days or something, so I really have no time for rest. Uh, I really have to, to, to look for a great recovery in the, in the, in the next couple of days, I mean. Uh, and yeah, I hope I can do um, the best I can in the next tournament. Brilliant, and we wish you all the best, eh? Fantastic. Well done, Ibrahim. Come stand, get a photo. Get, come in. What you've, thanks, Jen, stay on the court. What you've just witnessed is shows how far and an incredible athletic uh, the athletes the women have become over the years. 
to try and compete for these incredible amounts of money and, and points all over the world, they're fierce and they're working harder and harder all the time. And it's amazing to watch how, how much athleticism has come in and I, I love it. I'd like to welcome up our semi-finalist, our semi-finalist, our runner-up, Lucy Turmel from England. What a performance. So it can't be easy playing a friend and then having to look at her after she's beaten you. How, is it, how does it feel? No, to be honest, it's obviously tough, but I know myself and Jazz are both very hard workers and Jazz deserved that today, so it's just motivation for me and uh, I'm happy for Jazz. She, she was better today, so she deserved it. That's very, very well put. <laughs> Where are you off to now and what's your training schedule to get revenge? <laughs> I'm actually flying straight to Monaco tomorrow for another tournament. Um, so the same as the guys, straight back to it. But I feel like that's the best, best way to just get straight back into matches and try and be better. Fantastic. And we wish you all the best. And we're going to watch out for you. We're going to watch these names. Fantastic. And good luck for the next few years as well. Folks, our SA Open Squash 2023, presented by Lorium Capital and Growth Point Properties, female champion is Jasmine Hutton from England. <laughs> Just have a shake in Jess, can you tell us a bit, a bit more now that you've, the emotions are a little bit down? You must be still feeling as excited, but what do you think about this whole thing? Yeah, I'm really happy. You know, um, this event's been really cool and I've actually had such a good time and I'm really hoping that it can build its growth up and show squash in South Africa even larger than it is today. Um, I think it's incredible that we managed to get a 20K on and, you know, like you said the other day, we've got three of the top 30 girls in the world here, which is absolutely incredible. And I'm just so glad that we could put on a great show for you guys this whole week. And what are your movements now and what's the plan before, before Christmas? I'm not as crazy as that lot. I'm actually got three weeks off. <laughs> I'm just going home and I'm, I'm going to get myself geared up for Hong Kong in... I don't even know when it is. I think I go on the 23rd, so a few weeks till I go to Hong Kong. Well, again, like I said to everyone, we're going to watch out for you, and it's so good that you came here to play with us. We really appreciate it. It just raises a level for everybody. So good luck with your travels. Yeah, cheers. And then guys, if I can just quickly, if I can just call up two people who also um, helped us put this together and made it work. And I know they're probably not expecting this, but if Tato from uh, Growth Point Properties and Kim from Lorem Capital, if you can just come up and get a little thank you from us. Folks, I think that's pretty much the wrap, Apple. Um, I think the key thing is to build on this, and we look forward to you guys coming back.
bigger and great things, higher rankings, super gold, whatever you want to call it, but we thank you again for coming. Eh? We really appreciate it. You are the product. You are what we come to watch. Thank you very much. <laughs> the, the bar is going to be open if you want to have a little drink and mix and mingle, and that'll be fantastic too. So we'll see you inside there. And thanks again for coming to join us. We really appreciate the support.